Rainmaker, that mom with a laser here. I have a lot to cover with you guys today because I started off with one idea and then it grew into another one and now I'm gonna have a video packed of information for you guys and I hope you get value out of it. This all started because I really wanted to create an Easter sign that was both cutesy for the holiday but also symbolic for the people who are celebrating Easter for the holy and sacred holiday that it is. So I ended up coming up with this idea of creating little sheep. And then I reached out to some of my friends and I was like, I need a really good quote. And my friend Sam suggested this one, which I thought was perfect. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. So you can customize the sign by adding the family's name. And then you can pick and choose, you know, a little sister, a little brother sticking out his tongue. I have other little variations. But the sweet part about it is that you can customize the sign and it's appropriate for holiday decor during the Easter season. So I did a couple of things here. I scored and painted the letters on. I also cut letters and put them on here. So I'm gonna show you how I went about making this sign. However, if you didn't know already, Easter tags are one of the hottest items to sell during the Easter season. Take a bunny, take an egg, take a peep, slap a name on it, and you've got yourself a hot seller during the Easter season. So I thought, you know what, let me take my sheep and reinvent them and create my own Easter tags. So I've got little sister, <laughs> I've got older sister with the headphones, a little hat for brother, and just a couple of different variations so that you can customize your Easter tags and you hang this on your Easter basket. I know, super fancy. Who needs a custom Easter tag? <laughs> well, apparently a lot of people do. So since I'm anticipating having a lot of Easter tags to make, I need to make a jig that I'm gonna reuse over and over again. If you saw my last video, we made a temporary jig using cardboard, but this week I'm gonna show you how to do it with a reusable material. Today I'm using whiteboard. You ready? Let's go. All right guys, so the first thing I need to do is create my jig within Lightburn. So I'm gonna use the rectangle function right here and I'm gonna draw out a rectangle to the dimensions of my material. I happen to have an extra piece of whiteboard that's 27 by 14. So I'm gonna use this as a guide so that I can um, fill it out and use it to the max here. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my little sheep tags right here and I'm gonna use the array function to create rows easily, oops, wrong one, until it fills up my board here. Okay, I can squeeze these guys in a little bit more. So that's what I'm gonna do and max out as much of my material as I can. Okay, awesome. This top part here is gonna be for my tags. I also wanna create a little bit of a jig for the family signs. I don't think I'm gonna be making that many of them, but I'm gonna go ahead and nest them in here so that I have you know, plenty that I could use later. So now that I have my, my basic template, I want to make sure that I use up all this extra space in between. I don't want to waste that material. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab my little faces and I'm going to make them fit in every little hole so that I can go ahead and maximize my material. So this is what we call nesting. I am getting as much out of my material as I can. So I'm going to go ahead and nest all of my faces and my font into my jig and then we'll be ready to cut. So last week I made a temporary jig with cardboard, but today I want to make something a little sturdier that I can use over and over again. I'm still going to use an inexpensive material, but something a little sturdier. And this is eighth of an inch whiteboard that I get from Home Depot. It's one sided. Okay. The whiteboard is on the top part. And pretty much what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this kind of lip that's in between the metal and the honeycomb tray as a guide to help me get this jig in the same spot every time. So if you see, if I push up against this little metal piece right here, it doesn't move, right? So I'm gonna make sure that I put this in the right corner. I mean, you could put it in the left corner, bottom corner, wherever you want. I like to work this way. So if I always put it in the same spot, it's pretty much gonna be good to go. 
Now what I need to do is I'm gonna turn on the machine and I'm gonna set my origin. And the most important part is that I record the coordinates to the origin so I can get back to that exact spot every time I wanna use this jig again. So let's go. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I wanna to go to file and I wanna find my file that I've just sent over. I'm gonna hit enter. And then I'm going to set the origin for this job on my material. I typically like to set my origin to the top right corner of my laser bed. So that's what you see me doing right here. That looks pretty good. I'm going to click origin so it knows that this is where I want it to start the job. And then I'm going to frame it to make sure that everything is going to fall on this piece of material. So now I'm just going to pay attention, see if everything's falling on the material. And oh, I'm cutting it close there. But hey, I like to live on the edge. So it looks like we're good to move forward. Now this next part is really important. Now that I'm committed to that origin, I need to record the coordinates. You can do this in one of two ways. You can get the coordinates right from your controller, or you can get the coordinates in Lightburn in the Move panel by clicking on Get Position. Once you've got those coordinates, you're ready to start your job. Okay guys, so I have run the entire cut and I wanted to also have templates for my little sheep bodies because I have two different files here. I have the tags and then I have the little bodies. So I'm gonna clean this off and I'm gonna take it off of the laser bed. I'm done for today, I gotta go be a mom. Um, but then tomorrow I'm gonna show you how I would put this back in and how it's all gonna be lined up. So the last thing I wanna do, I don't wanna leave this little residue sitting on the whiteboard. So I'm gonna take Windex and a rag and then I like to just spray the Windex on the rag and I like to wipe it all down at the same time because it's much faster than taking it all out so that's what I'm going to do It's day two. I have taken all of my pieces out and I have my jig here. So I figured let's start from scratch as if I had removed it, which I did. And now I need to go and, you know, orders are coming in. So I'm going to take my pieces, add the names, and then I can finish them and ship them off to the customer. So I'm going to do what I told you guys. I'm just going to take my jig. I'm going to use the metal lip here to help me keep it in place. There we go. Now I'm going to turn on the machine. I'm going to go into Lightburn, set the exact coordinates of where I started my origin, and everything should line up properly so that I can grave custom names on these little sheep. Let's go. are cut and ready to go and now I want to go ahead and prepare the backer for the frame sign that I'm going to make. I want to keep this project as simple as possible so I'm actually going to use some boards that I already have cut and sanded. This right here is a 1x8 pine board that I got from Home Depot. I cut it down to 24 inches long and it's already sanded and ready for me. I always get asked how did I get that stain color but technically it's not a stain at all. It happens to be a custom blend that yours truly came up with years ago. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how I achieved that look. It's super simple. First, I'm going to whitewash the wood and I'm going to take one part paint, two part water. I put it in a jar because I use it all the time. And when I'm ready to use it, I shake it up and wash it onto the wood. Now, when I say one part paint, two part water, all that means is that I'm going to double the amount of water that I put in comparison to the amount of paint that I put. So if I use half a cup of white paint, I'm gonna use one cup of water. You ready? Let's go. So I'm gonna take my whitewash. I'm actually just gonna use a foam brush for this. This will be a little easier, I think. And then I'm gonna go ahead and wash it on. And you see it's very liquidy, very watery. And um, that's it. So wipe it on. If it's a little too much white, take your rag and 
takes them off. And that's pretty much it. Make sure you get all of your sides and that it looks even because once you put the stain over it, if it's not even, you'll see the splotches of white whitewash underneath. Now that I've whitewashed the board, now I'm just gonna take a dark stain, rub it on, and immediately wipe it off. So I typically use dark walnut, it just happens to be what I have on hand, and it gets that look. But honestly, any dark color will help you get similar results. Let's go. Now for the last step, I'm gonna take my stain, make sure you mix it up really well, and you can use a rag, a foam brush, whatever, I just use rags, um, and wipe it on, just like this. Try to get it as even as you can. Don't let it splotch in areas. And if it does, just kind of wipe it down until it looks even. And doesn't that look pretty? So I'm gonna go ahead and wipe it around the whole board and then I'll take some paper towels and wipe off any residue and then I'll let it dry. dried and all I have done is kind of like gently laid everything out so that I can see where it's going to go and I don't want to glue it like this obviously because if not I'm going to risk getting everything crooked so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pieces off and I'm going to score underneath them so I know exactly where to glue them I think it'll be much faster that way I also plan to score the names of the family members underneath the little sheet as well as the bible phrase right here and instead of masking the whole board, all I'm really gonna do is I cut up some pieces of masking tape and I'm gonna put them right under here. And this way I can score their names and then just take a paint pen and easily paint in the name. And that'll make sense too once I actually do it. So I'm gonna take these pieces off, put my little masking tape right here because I know that it's gonna go right around here. And then I'm gonna take my squeegee, of course. Make sure you squeegee it down. This is one of the first mistakes I made when I started with my laser and I almost started a fire. That was not fun because I did not squeegee down my masking tape. So make sure you do that, super important. And then I'm gonna go ahead and cut off the excess and we'll go ahead and throw it into the laser. Okay, so I already have my artwork set up. I just wanted to go ahead and show you how I got this ready so that I could score it. So the first thing I did is I used this square function right here um, to create a rectangle. And I, I made sure to measure my piece of wood to the exact measurements and I put them in right here, width and height, so that I could get everything you know proportionate once I cut it out and glue it on. So now that I have this as a frame, what I really want to do is I want to take my phrase and I want to score the background, meaning I just want to scratch it so that I can easily and quickly glue my pieces down without having to bother with rulers or anything like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in a little better so, so you guys can see this. And I'm going to hold down the control button on my PC and I'm going to select the outer rim of this font. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the outer rim of every letter here, or I'm sorry, every word. And then I'm gonna use the offset shapes function and I'm gonna do an inward offset. That's a little too tight. I want it to be a little more pronounced. That looks good. Okay, so I'm gonna select okay. And then I'm gonna go in here. I'm gonna select this inward offset that I just did. And I'm going to set it to green because I like to set my score functions to green. So once I do that, I'm just about ready to go ahead and frame it onto my board and um, score it. So this will all make sense in just a minute when I give you a visual. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and do an inward score of my little sheeps so that I get them perfectly aligned too. Let's see. That looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that to green. 
and I am scoring on a 60 watt mirror seven, 100 speed, 30 power. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my shapes, or actually this is easier. I can just deselect the output because I don't want it to cut anything. I don't want it to engrave anything. I just want it to do everything that's in green and I'm gonna send it off to the laser. Okay, now that my file is in my controller, I need to go ahead and focus my material, but this piece of wood is thicker than what I normally work with, so I'm gonna make sure I lower the laser bed so there's plenty of room between my material and the nozzle. I often use that metal lip at the top of the honeycomb tray to make sure that I'm getting things straight, so that's what you see me doing here. Now that my material is set, I'll go ahead and set the focus on the material. The last step is to frame my job on this board. Like I told you earlier, I typically like to work at the top right corner as my origin, so that's what you see me doing here. I'm trying to get the nozzle exactly on that top right corner, and I see that I have about a half of an inch within the material all around. That looks good to me. So it's time to score. Okay, so I have gone ahead and I've scored everything on, and now you can see I can easily line things up and glue them pretty quickly. Before we move forward, I'd also like to point out that this is something that I would normally cut with double-sided 3M adhesive on the back. However, I was all out, so I had to glue things this time. But before I do that, I am going to go ahead and take a weeding tool, and I'm going to weed out the letters to the words that I want to paint on. So I'll take a couple of minutes to do this, and then I'm going to paint using a white paint pen. Now, everybody always asks me, which ones do you like the best? I've tried them all, and I've just started using Posca. Um, I don't have an opinion on it yet. I am liking it, but everybody likes these. It seems like these get the best reviews. Um, they are a little more expensive. So once I really know how I feel about them, I'll let you guys know. So I'm going to go ahead and weed it out, and then I'm going to paint it in. I've been gluing my pieces on and now I need to glue them here but I need to peel off the masking tape. The paint has already dried on my letters so I'm going to go ahead and use this little um, it's a plastic razor to just get the masking tape up and pull it all off and we'll see how well my Posca marker did for my little lettering and look at that it's looking really clean it didn't run looks great i like the posca markers so far um i'm sorry paint pens i should say and i didn't realize that the one that i got is um acrylic paint all of my other paint pens are oil based and i like how much brighter and pronounced it feels um so so far i'm i'm liking it i'm gonna go ahead and peel off the rest and then continue gluing my pieces on <music> So the last part now is to paint the accent pieces on my little sheet people and glue them together. This is where I ran out of my 3M double-sided adhesive because I cut these guys before I started recording. So if you want to see how to work with 3M double-sided adhesive, just make sure to watch this video here. kudos to you because I know I threw in a lot of information in today's video. I hope you found value in what you watched today. If you liked what you saw, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell button so that you can get notifications every time I have a new video out. If you don't follow me on social media, please do so. I'm approachable. I love connecting with you guys and I'll see you guys here soon over at That Mom with a Laser.